I'm Larry Menti. Welcome back to the Delaware Way. When you hear about vaccines, you normally think about childhood diseases and vaccines for children, but there are vaccines you should be getting as an adult. Here to talk more about that is Dr. Ray Carter from Christiana Care. The only one that comes to mind that I think most people would think about is a flu shot, right? Sure, sure. So influenza would be the first vaccine that's recommended for all um, people over age six months of age. And certainly that includes all adults as an annual vaccine, but there are some others as well. Can we stay with the flu shot for one second? Sure. Because there seems to be some pushback on the flu shot, and, and I'm sure some of these are misnomers. What about the concern that if you get the flu shot, you're going to get the flu? Right, right, right. So there are actually two different types of flu vaccine that are offered. Uh, one is a uh, live attenuated vaccine that's called a flu mist, which goes in your nose, which is um, approved for adults up into age 50. And there also is the inactivated vaccine, which is killed more or less proteins, which is the shot that people are commonly familiar with. Neither of these actually give you influenza. The, in, the vaccine that goes into your arm, which most people are more familiar with, actually is just proteins. They bear some resemblance to what influenza is, but it has no way the capability to reproduce or cause any illness. So all these anecdotal stories you hear about people that get the flu, it's just bad timing? Yeah, I think that's part of it. Um, we give the flu shot during the time of year when people are getting sick, not just from influenza, but other illnesses as, you know, fall and winter are approaching, people are in closer environments. So people attribute, you know, A to B and say, well, a couple weeks ago I got the flu shot, it must have been that. But most often it is coincidence rather than any causation. People may have some side effect from the flu shot, and that may be a little bit of a sore arm. That's probably the most common thing that people are affected by. Um, some people actually get a low-grade temperature. That's not very common, but some patients will report that. And some people will kind of um, complain of maybe a little bit of runny nose, maybe, maybe some other kind of mild symptoms, but that's truthfully uncommon. Uh, let's talk about some other vaccines. Okay, so probably another one that comes to people's mind is tetanus. Tetanus, which uh, prevents lockjaw, so to speak. Step on a rusty nail, that's what people are familiar with. And that tetanus vaccine is good for 10 years. So most children in, this, um, in the United States have had the vaccine um, several times over the course of their youth. And then as they turn to an adult, they should get the tetanus vaccine once every 10 years because that vaccine provides about 10 years of protection. But uh, don't most people get it? when they step on something or they cut themselves. I mean, nobody goes and says, hey, I need a tetanus shot. You get, you step on something, they say, when was your last tetanus shot? And then you get one. Right, right. But it, I think as an, an effort to do things in advance, uh, an ounce of prevention probably works better than a pound you of cure. You need to, though? Do you need to do it that way or can you wait until you the, actually? The recommendation would be to do it in advance for the best protection you can have. So you're not giving a vaccine at the same time as you're potentially getting a nasty infection. It would be best to do it in advance. Your body has time to prepare. I was just trying to save myself having to go and get a shot. There That's all that was. How about some other ones? Okay, so together with the tetanus shot is something called whooping cough or pertussis. It's actually, I, I do pediatrics as well. It's actually an, an infection that affects children much more significantly get, than it affects adults. adults. Adults are better at transmitting this infection though, which is the problem. So it's a public health initiative in order to protect the children and unvaccinated people in your community. Um, um, whooping cough is recommended um, as a one-time adult booster. And that vaccine actually goes together with tetanus. And that vaccine is combined to something called um, um, the TDAP, tetanus diphtheria and acellular pertussis, a single vaccine that pr provides protection against all those um, types of infections. How many people get that? How many Do people? most people go and, and, and walk into a, a doctor's office and say, I, I want to get this shot? I think they do, yes. Um, I kind of explain to you, as I, as I do to them, how uh, the importance of these things and how it's better to do this in a preventative step. Um, I make it part of the physical exam. We talk about all the vaccines that are indicated for adults. And I think most people are agreeable, sure. Anything we're not thinking of? In terms that, of other that, vaccines? Um, yeah, other vaccines? Oh, sure. There are actually others um, as well. Wow. Yeah. So um, we think about childhood vaccines, and there's a very set and rigid schedule that, that gives you kind of uh, times more or less uh, when children should be getting these vaccines. But some of that actually translates to adult adulthood. So if you haven't obtained some of those childhood vaccines, they're important to catch up and get those vaccines as, as per the CDC and other um, medical organizations to make sure that you are protected and immune. But even if you have not, there are other vaccines that continue into adulthood. So some of these are dependent on medical risk factors, other medical conditions that people may have, and some of them are um, dependent on age. I would think your doctor would tell you. I mean, if, would you, if, if your doctor knows your medical conditions and your age and things, your doctor would tell you most of this, exactly. right? Exactly. Yeah, so that's true. So we discussed flu vaccines so far, as well as whooping cough and tetanus. Next, perhaps, would be uh, pneumo, pneumococcal vaccines, of which there are two. Um, pneumovax and Prevnar 13 are the, are, the, are the numbers that they're kind of, the names that they're 
described as. But those are for people over a certain age, mainly um, 65 and older. There are certain medical qualifications for those for younger adults as well, but mainly 65 and older. A lot of people are just afraid of shots and would rather not get them, but they really are medical miracles. Yeah, they really and they're are. they're saving lives. They, they certainly are. I mean, if you think back historically in times before some of these modern medical miracles, so to speak, like antibiotics and vaccines, just, you know, one out of every few children would succumb to some of these illnesses. Just horrible things that we don't even think about anymore because we're, we're protected by these vaccines. Doctor, thanks a lot. Thanks for having Thank the conversation. You very much. Thank Appreciate you for coming it. in. And so the most important thing is you get your flu shot. Almost certainly. Dr. Ray Carter from Christiana Care. When we come back, we're going to talk about 40 exceptional people under 40 in Delaware when Delaware Way continues.